Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Johnson and this is the SaltCast. Today I bring a special guest, uh, Jeremy Porter, on with me today. Jeremy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ryan. Glad to be here. Now, uh, Jeremy, you are a Utah native and uh, you have brainstormed and came up with a business that I think is really cool. Um, and it's called repurpose recycling. And I thought your, your story was really cool. I, uh, did some research into it. And when you reached out to me, you know, I think it was a couple months ago already, but I thought this was really cool. And I thought it was, you know, a Mr. Beast level, um, effort you're trying to put into, uh, recycling. And I just want you to hear your story. Yeah, yeah. Everyone brings up Mr. Beast when we talk about uh, cleaning the oceans. Um, so pretty cool the the awareness that he's brought to uh, the, the issue. So um, yeah, we collect ocean bound plastic in developing countries. We worked um, we work in Guatemala. We launched there about 14 months ago. Um, currently, we've collected um, like 115,000 pounds, uh, oh. and we work with over 100 um, collectors. Um, the idea is it's kind of a gig economy style collection of ocean plastic. Anybody can go out, um, in these coastal areas with high risk of, um, plastic ending up in the ocean. There's no formal, um, recycling or garbage pickup. Um, so they can go out and turn this, um, plastic, um, and trash into something of value. Um, and they bring it to us and we pay them for it by the pound and, um, so we also provide some resources to these collectors, um, educational resources, among other things, to help them um, leave the, the poverty cycle. And um, yeah, um, everything that we collect, we make sure it gets recycled. Um, that's basically what we do. That's really cool. How does, how does a collector you know, find you? You know, someone in Guatemala, like, how do they find you and know that this is, like, an opportunity for them? Yeah, it's kind of word of mouth. Like, it was pretty slow getting started. Um, like, the first month, we collected, like, 100 pounds. Like, we found uh -huh. just a couple people. Like, I knew some people in Guatemala. They shared it with their friends. Um, and then it's just slowly grown, like, through networking um, people like will see us or they'll know of a friend that's doing it. Um, or we have workers that reach out to their family members. Like, um, it's just, yeah, kind of slowly building and getting bigger and bigger. So what does a collector need in order to, you know, do the job? Um, really nothing. Um, they can collect anywhere. They can, they can even just collect what they um, use like when they um, use plastic in their everyday life they can just collect that and give it to us and get paid for it um, or they can go and walk around town and pick up plastic um, and collect it that way some you know we have some people that um, they go out into the ocean um, so we've got a guy he's got um, like a little surfboard that he swims out um, across this bay to where he knows there's tons of plastic. Um, he loads up a bunch of plastic on his little surfboard and, and swims back with it. And um, so there's like very uh, differing levels of involvement with it. Um, some people it's full time. Some people it's just um, a couple hours a, a day. Some people just, um, you know, a couple hours a week. So yeah, it really depends, uh, but there's not really any barrier to entry um, to get involved with um, collecting this plastic. That's really cool. So how do they send it to you? Like, do they, like, how do you process the plastic? Where, where do you do it? Yeah, so we've got like a central hub, um, and then we drive around with the truck to pick it up from everybody. Um, okay. So they don't have to, if they're, if they're close to us, and have a means to bring it to us, they do. Um, but we've got pretty um, far reaching uh, locations that we pick up from. So a lot of it is us going around, we show up, we coordinate with them and uh, collect what they've um, collected um, once they have a big enough quantity. Yeah. 
so Jeremy, where did you even get this idea? Like what, what spurred this, this idea? Yeah, good question. Um, so I lived in Guatemala. Um, I was a missionary down there for two years and I saw just a big need for some better waste management. Um, and also saw lots of poverty, always wanted to be involved in helping, um, in that realm. And then I took a humanitarian trip to Fiji and we helped them build some like incinerators for their waste. You know, people down there were telling us they just didn't have anything to do with their, their plastic. Um, and so we helped them, you know, find a way to incinerate it. Um, that got me thinking there's gotta be a better way. Like, why can't we just recycle this and turn it into something of value? Um, and it was a pretty long process. Like I, um, I spent most of my college years, um, coming up with different ideas and like ideating and pivoting and changing the idea until I finally learned enough about the industry, um, that I could put together a, a plan that, um, seemed like it would work. And then we took the leap and launched and we've been learning a ton ever since we've launched, but, um, yeah, it's working. So, um, took a while, but we're, we're getting it figured yeah. out. <laughs> I mean, that is, I can't even imagine the logistics. So, um, serving down there in Guatemala, you know, I guess it would make it nice because you probably have quite a few connections, right? And you saw people at church or, you know, the people you talk to and you could probably see it's like these people could use some work like they want. Yeah. work in a way to make some money and and you know you're you're you know killing two birds with one stone essentially yeah yeah that's the idea it it totally helped um having connections down there we thought about going to some other countries first but um just like the value of having relationships in a country already um mm -hmm. was just too valuable um to um, to not take advantage of and, um, go to Guatemala first. Um, and also they have a really big problem with ocean bound plastic. Um, so they have some, some rivers that are very highly ocean polluting rivers. Um, and so it just ultimately made sense for a lot of reasons, but, um, yeah, totally. Those, those, um, relationships were very, very helpful. So, um, how did you figure out how to monetize this? Um, yeah, good question. So, um, the market price of plastic is super volatile. Um, and that's kind of the hard thing with recycling. Um, sometimes when demand is high and, um, all the factors work, it's, it can be very profitable to recycle. Um, and then something can happen that just drops the price extremely low. Um, and then it's not. And so, um, kind of the idea from the beginning was to find a way to separate, um, the recycling efforts from the market price of plastic. Um, and you know, we, um, we started selling bracelets and merchandise like t-shirts and stuff to raise awareness and also to help raise money for this. Um, and then we kind of looked at the carbon offset market, um, and, saw a way to implement like carbon offset credits, um, but for plastic, so plastic offset credits, it's kind of a new emerging market right now. Um, and that's kind of, um, how we saw the way to separate ourselves from the market risk, the market volatility and, um, get corporations and individuals involved in this recycling effort, um, and have a big impact in these lives and on the environment down there. Yeah, I, I am unintelligent and uneducated about, you know, the recycling of plastic, but like, what can you do? Like how, how is plastic re even recycled? What do they, what is its yeah. uses? Yeah. Um, there's uh, a lot that goes into it. It depends on the purity of the plastic, how, um, deter deteriorated it is from like UV light and stuff. Um, but you can, you can turn it back into uh, the same thing that it was in before. Um, you can turn it back into water bottles. You can um, make uh, t-shirts and, you know, polyester thread from it and make shoes and um, <laughs> you can make diapers from it. 
Um, there's some plastics that are harder to recycle, like plastic bags is like a film plastic, and right. that's a lot harder to recycle. Uh, but there's a company like Trexdex, if you've heard of them. Um, they uh. take plastic bags, mix it with like sawdust and other things, and they, they can make decks out of it. Um, Whoa. <laughs> Yeah, and that's that's pretty hard to recycle in, in other ways. So that's that's a pretty cool way to extend the use of um, that plastic. Yeah, that is super super neat. So, like, what is your goal? Like, what what how what do you see in your future with this? Yeah, um, we we'd love to be able to expand. Like, I think this is something so many countries can benefit from. Um, and there's other people that are doing similar things that are doing incredible stuff also. Um, but there's just, um, you know, it's 8 million tons of plastic going into the ocean every year. So just based off of those numbers, like there's tons and tons of countries that can benefit from these types of solutions. And um, obviously poverty is a huge issue also. And that's something that um, we can go to a lot of countries with also. Um, and I think there's also some implications for developed countries. Um, I think our recycling system in the U.S. and other rich countries is also a mess, and I think there's ways we can learn things in developing countries and implement some ways um, to use that here in the U.S. Um, so I think, I think ultimately the recycling industry is um, – there's going to be a huge shift in what we do and, and there's going to be a lot of processes and technology to make it better because it's unsustainable the way that we're living and using all this plastic and not having a way to dispose of it. Right. So, um, yeah, huge, huge things are the coming in the industry. Definitely. Um, and we'd love to take part in, in helping some people out of poverty and cleaning up the world in the next few years. So, yeah, no, I, Jamie, I really love your, your mission and what you've started and what your, your goals are. I think that's super neat and, you know, definitely could use more Jeremy's in the world, <laughs> but, uh, how can, uh, we support you? What's the best way, uh, people can, can help you out? Um, yeah, you can go check out what we're doing. Um, we have Instagram, LinkedIn, um, it's just repurpose recycling on most of those. And then the website is repurpose recycling.com. Um, go check out what we're doing. Um, you can support us by buying a bracelet or buying a t-shirt. Um, and then, um, a big thing is just showing that you care about, um, where the products you buy come from, right? Like supporting brands that are doing good things. Like we are working to partner with um, lots of brands that want to be plastic neutral and, and have a positive impact. Um, and so you can support those brands and um, make this kind of impact um, easier to, to happen. Yeah, no, I, I love it. And do you have a website or is it just mostly Instagram? And social uh, yeah, media? the website is repurposerecycling.com. Okay. Yep, so check us out there. Awesome. Well, uh, you know, Jeremy, I love getting people on that are doing amazing things because, you know, our philosophy at Peisner Johnson, you know, we, we strictly help businesses deal with their sales tax woes and their sales tax responsibilities. Right. And, you know, our, our goal is to be able to, you know, take that over for businesses um, that are doing amazing things like you take the sales tax burden off their shoulders so they can continue to do those awesome things uh, that they're doing in developing their business and growing their own business. And because what we see is, you know, sales tax can be a struggle. Um, and, you know, when they're selling products and services and conforming to each state's laws and regulations, but um, yeah, but Jeremy, thank you uh, so much for being on with us today. And, you know, I really, I'm, I'm going to be following you and make sure that that you're successful because I think this is definitely a worthy uh, adventure that you've put yourself on. Thank you. Yeah, and that's awesome what you guys are doing, um, helping businesses out. You know, I think mean, that's huge to increase efficiency and just solve problems for businesses. 
Yep. And that'll wrap up for today's episode. And uh, thank you again and hope to see you on another one. Sounds good. Thanks, Ryan.